Hello, my name is Mark Anthony DuBose Jr. And I was born July 4th, 1986. Today I'm gonna talk about something that, you know, there's a lot of research out here and studies out here about these dogs and the science stuff about these dogs, but sometimes some stuff just works and it's just like, I don't have anything to back, why does it work? I don't know why it works, but it just works. Sometimes we stumble upon things like that in life. Sometimes in reality, I'm gonna straight up say, just what I've known to see in my life and the reality out here of what's real and what's, what's the, the, the real real, not this fantasy looking stuff but the real real, the real real, people don't understand why. For instance, you get happy. Why, why are you happy? What makes you happy? What makes you satisfied? What makes you feel good? No one actually really truly understands that. We all think that if you do this or you do that or you this or that, then you'll be happy. But in reality, what makes each of us happy is a weird phenomena that we are all extremely individually paired with what makes us happy inside. What makes me happy is having way less, like getting rid of everything, having no material items at all, and having animals. I don't know what it is, but my, my hoarding things, if you haven't noticed in some of my videos, I got chicken, man, and I want like thousands of them. That's, that's, that's something that brings happiness to me, as opposed to having like a thousand watches or a thousand pairs of shoes. Someone else, some shoes, man, y'all got shoe closets. It's just like, it's amazing. But there's something about that that is very interesting because that really comes down to the same uniqueness that dogs are. That we're all out here thinking like this is gonna work if if it worked for this 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 study and this scientific thing then it's gonna work for all of them but you're doing a scientific study on individual animals and something that unfortunately this is where you know i would say i would, I would appreciate if we would step our game up with all these scientific things hey uh, oreo get down uh step our game up with it because with humans we'll 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 do a study with a million two three four five million people but with dogs they're doing like a hundred a thousand at most. That is not realistic expectations with doing only a thousand of the millions that we have on this planet. We, we have billions of people, so we should be doing at least thousands and thousands, 100,000 dog studies, 200,000 dog studies, a million dog studies to figure out what's actually going to work and what's actually good. Because it's something that I just know. A lot of this stuff, it, it, it just works. And, and I don't know why it works, but it works. And the one thing that I'm going to say today that just universally seems to work with pretty much every dog that I ever work with is simply doing something so simple right now that I'm gonna end up having to show you because I keep on getting into this. I, I'm trying to explain to this dog, the, the Border Collie, to stay, but I have to keep saying it to him. And when I keep saying it to him, I notice that he keeps getting up and going around more as opposed to when I just do something. And when I do something, that do something that I wanna say that is so simple, that just works, is put a leash on the dog and do nothing with them. Even if they come up to you for affection, you're just gonna ignore them. Even if the, whatever they're doing, you just put that leash on that dog and you do nothing with it. There's something, I don't know what it is and I don't know why, but this also works with human beings sometimes and, and it just works on dogs. Sometimes we're just, we're, we're, we're doing too much for them and we need to like make them like desire us and want us a little bit. Not desire us in a way of I'll sit and I'll die and I'll this, I'll this and this and pay attention to me, but just, just hang out and I'll pay attention to you. Just relax and I'll pay attention to you. Just know that everything is all good, and I'll pay attention to you. But, but get some sort of, where I would say it's separation, that I, I think we're trying to do too much, and, and that's where we're, we're, we're struggling. And that's what the unfortunate, you know, I just, like I said, you got you a puppy, raise it the way that you want to. Get, shut the videos off, please. Shut them off. And when you run into that situation in a year or two years that the dog is crazy, turn a video, don't even turn a video on, go find someone local to be able to help you out with that. But just raise it the way that you want to raise it. Because there's something that I'm, I'm going to say is when, when you're doing all this, this stuff with these treats and all these things, you're, you're raising that dog to be a specific way. And the day that you decide the, I'm going to stop doing all of that because he's good enough, you're going to start to run into problems because now you have an exceptionally clingy dog that's going to need advice from you for every little thing that it does. Every little thing. If you're having a guided every single time to get off the couch or do this or do this or go there, go here, get here, throw the tree, get in there, throw the tree, go over there, throw the tree, go over there, your dog is not going to know how to do anything on its own. And this is again what I'm going to say, that dogs are smart, man. They are so smart. They are so willing to do. But we sometimes treat them and train them as if they're just some dumb stuffed animal. They are smart. They could process. They could problem shoot. They could figure things out. I love watching this dog just troubleshoot what he's got to do. When he's got an animal that's way out, he's like, I'm not going to go for that because I want to get these four through first. So let me get these four, then I'll go back and get that one. Then other times he's like, you know, maybe I'll get that one with these and it'll make it easier to get them all so I don't have to fight so much with the, the individual and I'll use my herd mentality to get them through. And he figures it out. He just, he, 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 he's on a mission in itself. One jumps the fence and he's like, should I jump the fence to get it now? He's like, I'll wait. Let me get the others. It is, it is impressive. 
But if you're just micromanaging every little thing, you're, you're not going to allow the dog to be able to process what it is that it can, it can do it on its own. And it's something that, that is powerful, which is putting a leash inside of your house and just having the dog be in your presence and do nothing. Nothing. Zero. I watch this over and over and over again. I come in the households and the dogs are, are jumping. They're all crazy. They're wild. They're, they're just manning. And I come back a week later to just see the dogs hanging out. A week later, more chill. A week later, just so calm. And it's like, this is not the same house. This, these are not the same dog. What happened? What's going on? And I just watch it over and over. Because we're, we're, we're doing too much sometimes, most times, all the time in reality. We're just doing too much. It's something that, I don't know what this is, but sometimes I say something and I'm just, just, just speaking from the heart of what it is that for my own self even to watch to see. And I'm like, I hear something that I say and I'm like, man, I, I really want to focus more of my own time on that. Not just try to help someone else out. Because a lot of the information I give to some people, I don't do with my dogs. And then I'm just like, I felt weird about that a little bit. So then I started to do more of what I say and I started to do with my dogs. And I just started, I don't know what it is, but this past couple of months, like this dog specific, my big Johnny man there, he, 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 he lays with me. He sits with me. He, he comes to me like, what's up, man? How's it going? And he never used to do that because I was always micromanaging every little thing. You go over here, go sit over there, lay over there, do this, do this. The, the day that I just gave, I literally gave up. I just look at him and like, dude, do whatever the heck you want to do. Like literally, like he's got rules. He can't just leave. He can't take off. He can't bite stuff. He can't chew on stuff that I tell him not to chew on. He, he's still got boundaries. But as far as the, the whole sit stays and the, and the be over here and do, I just, I, just, I just stopped communicating words to him and allowed him to just figure it out. The one thing that he gets jammed up on, he, he, he can get on the couch, but he always looks for me. Can I do it? And I'm like, dude, th th that's your section. If you want to sit there, sit there. Anywhere else, then yeah, maybe you should ask. But his section, and once I just stopped like making him do this weight stay to, and ask me to get on it, this dude, this dude seriously is just transforming into like, he just has no choice but to say thank you to me. He, he's starting to get closer to me. We're, our bond is starting to get way better. Stuff that just goes against what, say, dog training stuff out there is telling us to do with our dogs. You need to be more on top of them. They'll care about you more. But I've learned that the more I just let them do what they do, the more that they start to just really appreciate me. And again, I know someone's going to say, I, I love that comment. If someone said, oh, just let them jump, let them bite people. No, there's boundaries. There's limitations. There's some things that they just cannot do when it comes down to a safety thing, a danger thing. You cannot put, I'm not going to allow my dogs to be in danger. They can run far out here, but as soon as they get to that road and cross that, that gate to go out, that is off limits. That is off limits, off limits. And I'm going to do something to let you know that that's off limits because it's serious out there. There's cars going 60 miles an hour. They do not care about you going around a turn. Your life is in danger at this moment. So I have to make sure that there is a serious boundary in place. But as far as everything else, who cares? And a lot of times we're doing too much and the dogs do not know how to just, just be and just relax and, and do what it is they got to do on their own. So the number one thing I'm going to say is just put a leash. In reality, I, I love me a slip leash. I don't know what the, the hostility is with these, these pieces of equipment. It's a stupid, simple leash. And it's the most effective leash to give extremely clear communication to the dog. If your dog is choking on that leash, and that's why you're giving up on it, it's because your dog is too hiding and roused and doesn't understand what leash pressure is. It feels that pressure and it thinks, I'm going to fight through it, as opposed to it feels that pressure needs to come back from it. So sit in your house and put that leash on your dog and in zero distractions, get all the toys out of the house, get all the bones to chew out of the house, get the kids out of the house even for a little bit if the kids are getting them riled up. And just allow that dog to understand what that leash means. And once he understands what that leash means, I'm telling you, you're, you're, you're smooth sailing after that. Because the dogs need to understand what that pressure means. That means to stop. It doesn't mean to keep fighting through it. And a lot of y'all have issues because your dog is fighting through the pressure of the leash. I don't care if it's a heart, I don't care what it is, any sort of pressure, the treats, the toys, the leashes, all that, your, your praise, your, your words, your, your body, your, your, you're putting too much pressure and the dog doesn't understand that that pressure means to actually stop. And that's one thing that is just, it's so simple and it transforms dogs. We're talking too much. We're micromanaging too much. We're trying to go here, do this, do this, do that, as opposed to just giving them. So right here is a prime example of something that I'm going to say that I, that I have to do. Come here, man. He don't, he don't, he, he don't appreciate the leash because he's never had a leash. Oreo, come here. He don't appreciate the leash because he's, he's never had a leash. He's never been trained on a leash, but he knows the power of what it is that I'm no longer going to speak to him. He's actually just, Oreo, come here. Come here. Come here. He over here like, I'm going to act pretty now because I pull out something that's powerful to the dogs. Me telling him what I want over and over, it's clearly 
not doing anything. Because day after day, I've been watching this. I've been studying, I've been watching a couple of my videos back. I've been watching, I've been saying down to this boy like a dozen times in a 20 minute, 30 minute video. And it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse. For a while, it was really, really good. Because I wasn't saying it to him, I was doing something about it. And that doing something was bringing this leash out to explain to him of what it is that I'm looking for. I put the leash on the dog and I no longer have to say anything. I'm expecting him to think it through, to figure out what's going on here. And it's not in a matter of punishment, but at the same time, it is. It's, it's, it's where I would say is, is it's that, I, I'm not going to use that term because I don't appreciate those terms, how they use it. But uh, it's, 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 it's a clear communication that we have. It's not a punishment that he's, say, in trouble. It's something that I'm guiding him to teach him what I'm looking for. Because if I have to keep saying it over and over and over and over again, we're not getting anywhere. We're not learning anything. He's not learning what it is I'm looking for. He's, he, he, he's thinking like, oh, well, maybe that was for five seconds, as opposed to when I said it, I, I just, I want you to do it. And, and this dog isn't no pet hangout dog. He, he's a working dog and he can handle it. He's butt hurt like crazy right now. And, and it's an unfortunate, I don't like seeing him like that, but that's the thing. They have to be able to go through that. We have to be able to push them past that. We have to be able to guide them to show them like, hey, you, you may not appreciate what's going on right this second, but I'm telling you great things are going to happen to you in the future. But right now, I have to do so. I have to follow through with something, man, because you're just doing too much. You're acting too wild. And if anyone is just like, oh, my goodness, you know, I, I work for some people and I stop doing this and I stop. I, I fire myself quick working with some people, people, because if if I have to put a little bit of pressure in your dog and you see him look the way this boy is looking right now, well, he, he all right, actually, he just going to take a nap. But uh, seeing how he's looking and you get like this kind of excited, kind of happy about it. You know, th th there's something weird about that going on. But to me, this breaks my heart. Every time I have to say, give a correction to a dog, if I gotta use my leash and do something, if I gotta do anything I need to do to tell that dog like a serious, no, I'm, I don't want that. It hurts me. I don't like it. I don't like that part of working with dogs. That's the hardest, the absolute hardest part for me with working with dogs. But there's something else that I do know. I have to do it. I have to. I have to say, hey, I don't want that. And not in a way that I'm communicating my mouth, but the way that the dog understands the leash. We are so smart as human beings. That's why we created these leashes. That's why someone saw a dog one day, thousands of years ago and said, hey, how can I convince him to get close to me and stay here? And he put something on that dog to make that happen. Same with all of our animals, all the animals. Why do you think they put the cow thing in the nose to get them to move with them? Because when things are big, man, when a bull don't want to move, <laughs> it ain't moving. So they was like, we got to do something about that. So they try to probably, probably leash it and realize, we can't just manhandle no weight like that. So they put that thing in its nose and it's just like, and the bull just like, oh, okay, I'm going that way. So easy to maneuver them. And not in a way that I'm going to damage and hurt the animal, but just guide the animal to make their life easier. And sometimes that pressure comes and it's, it, 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 we don't feel good about it, but we have to do it to make things get better. If we just ignore it, we run away from it. We're not, we're not doing what it is that we need to do to be able to guide things in our lives to get better. And that's the concept today that I can read parenting books from, from 10, 15, 20, or not 10, but 20, 30, 40 years ago, and the language in it is much different than the language of today, of don't ever say no to your kids, and don't yell at your kids, and don't discipline your kids, and let your kids run fool and run a wild. Like, there, there, there's a balance that needs to go on here. There's some things that are just a heck no, and other things, you just got to figure it out. And that's what I love about dogs, is they are also able to be able to figure things out. Not nearly the same as a child, but I'm telling you, we do not need to micromanage everything that's going on. And sometimes we need to just say, do something, put it in place, such as just put the leash on the dog and give it no attention and just make it calm down and make it relax to be able to communicate to that animal what we're looking for. To say, hey, I don't like what, this, this is the thing. I, 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 I don't know what this guy's name, Dale, Dale something, Dale M, something, the, a trainer I watch, that it, he, he says it perfectly about bribing the dogs with using the treats. And then the opposite side of that is when you're starting to have issues, it's an intervention that's going on here. There's something that has to happen that's going to change that we have to do because the dog is going crazy. The dog is going wild. We're not going to come and try to give it treats to get it out of it. No, we got to come with, say, some sort of pressure. And that pressure doesn't need to be some extreme, like, cranking, yanking, and throwing, and swinging, and going wild with the dog. But just putting a very strict rule on the dog and saying, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want. And that's it. And the dog's going to be butt hurt. You know, he got a little butt hurt. The dude actually didn't even want to come back to me instantly right away for the first time in a while. He's like, I'm not going over there. But I give him a choice. I give him a choice. And we're at the stage in our relationship now, I give him a choice. I say, if you come and do what I'm looking for, we don't have to go to that. 
But if you decide that you just want to keep doing what you was doing, then we're going to have to go to this. I'm going to give him that choice. And that's something that he needs to figure out on his own, not me constantly keep telling him over and over again. And that's where to be able to figure out how to start that is, I'm telling you, put a leash, slip leash on a dog and put it in your house and just hang out with it. Sit on the couch with it. Go, go in your living room with them. If you work at home, my goodness, you will be able to fast track this like crazy. You work your eight hour set, uh, session at home with the dog on leash and you're just doing what you're doing. You got eight dogs, you know, it's going to be a little bit harder for you. But if you got just a dog, this is going to be just a breeze for you. The dog is going to want to go. It's going to want to do this. It's going to do that. It's going to get to the point that it gets like frustrated in a way that it's say bored. And it's going to like, I got to go do something. And that's the, the prime of what I'm going to say where things get good. Because then a the dog is just going to say, you know, I'm just going to sleep. It's like, cool, get some real rest right now because we're going to go do something later on that I'm going to need you to be all, like fully alert and fully engaged, but just get rest right now because I'm busy. I'm focused. I need to do what I need to do and you get rest. And when I'm done and when I see that you're calm and I'm also rested because I'm not all on top of you with everything all day, we're going to be able to do something absolutely fantastic. But I just see this work with every single dog, every single dog. I've yet to meet a dog that this just doesn't work with. Put the dog on the leash and ignore them. Ignore the dog on leash. It comes up to you for pets, you're not petting it. You're gonna pull it, guide it away, like get off me, dude. Don't, don't, don't mess with me. Because that's what we need to really get into the dog's brain. Because that's where the relationship needs to get changed some from what we used to do. The dog used to just do whatever it wants to you. Jump all on you, lick all on you, be all on you, lean up all on you, lay all up on you. And you're, you, you need to give that dog some new rules of what's going on here. The new rules of you're, you're not doing what I'm looking for, so you, you, I'm access denied. I'm access denied, but it doesn't mean that you can go off and do what you do. I'm telling you to do this. This is what I'm asking for you to do now. So I'm telling him right here, this is what I'm asking for you. This is what I'm looking for. You got no access to me right now. You're not going to run up to me and jump on me. You're not going to come lick on me. You're not going to do nothing. I'm telling you what I need you to do. And once you get through that, the dog is going to have a way more higher level of appreciation for you because the dog is going to turn into respecting you and, learn, and realizing that you, you do matter that your word does matter, that your being and your presence does matter. These dogs are, are super simple, but the simple things, are, I'm gonna say the, the, they're hard, but this method here I'm gonna say is not hard. And I watch it work with every, every, every single dog. And this even works with other little things that I've worked with. It works with horses, it works with the donkey, it works with my cows. My cows want to run, act a fool, I pen them up and I put them in a small area and I put feed in there for them. And they're like, I wanna be able to roam. It's like, you can't roam until you roam correctly. And every time you're somewhere where you don't want to be, I lock you up and or I put pressure on them with the dog. This stuff works with all of these animals. It's just, it's just some universal thing that goes on. That I'm not happy with what's going on, but I don't want you to be away from me. I don't want you to, 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 to think that I don't want you, so I'm going to keep you close to me. But I'm not going to give you the attention like right now until you calm down, until you relax, and then I'll give you attention. But if you just literally, even when they are calm, just still ignore them. Still just, just give them nothingness. Because you have, you have issues that are going on there that you need to be able to get past. You're rarely looking. Some people are looking for a dog trainer because mainly the one reason you look for a dog trainer is you got a puppy and to figure out what to do. And I'm gonna say that that is just a no-go. Just do what you gotta do, do what you wanna do. And in reality, don't even watch stuff but read puppy books. That'll really guide you in a better way so that you can just read the content going on and then you can skip the content that you're like, I don't know about instead of watching old video after video after video after video. You're gonna, you're gonna see something completely different. And in every other case that you need a dog trainer, and the most that I just, I don't know why it all, it just comes to me. You know, I rarely get puppy calls. I get calls of, you know, my dog is biting other dogs. My dog is lunging at dogs. My dog is, is crazy. My dog is biting me. My dog bit my wife. My dog bit the kids. My dog, dog put the kid in the hospital. That's the most cases that dogs are, we're getting called in to help you with your dog. You have like what I would say is a serious issue that's now getting to the point that it's dangerous. I'm, I'm scared. How many people are scared of their dogs right now? Maybe not say scared of it, but scared of what it would do to something, to somebody. And it, 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 it's got you super nervous. And since you're super nervous, that nervousness is being fed to that dog and the dog is confused. What's going on here? Do I need to react even more now because you're nervous? And not scared of kids, but you're scared of what your dog may do to it. So your dog is gonna go 100 for you, man. Your dog is gonna go crazy. And the best way to get them to get out of that is to start by, for one, this concept just teaches them pressure release of the leash. When they're calm, they're, they respond so well to a slip leash, so well. But when they're just super erratic and crazy, they push through it and they start choking. You gotta get that dog to relax. 
And if you put the leash on and the dog starts flipping and going crazy, you're just gonna stand there and wait it out. And this is where some of the stuff gets crazy, that there's different methods and different dogs in different situations. That's why I always have this extra leash on me. Sometimes I have another one on me. This is my go-to. But I have to put my main leash on that I show up and the dog starts chewing on that leash. And I'm like, hey, man, we can't do that. So I'll put the second one on. I got that. Drop that. Pick that. Drop that. Pick that. Usually after five minutes of that, the dogs quit, man. They're just like, oh, wow, you're smart. I'm like, I am, dude. And I've had one dog that would chew on two of the leashes at once. So I had to put a third one on that dude. I'm not sitting there yanking on him. I'm just hanging out. I'm just literally, this is my, this is my motion that I do when I'm working with you and your dog. And I'll get your dog exhausted to the point that it's, it's, it sleeps all night and all morning. But I, I can stand right here just like this. And this gets your dog tired. This, get, this dude is sleeping already. This, this is the same thing that's going on. He, just, he ain't got the leash on, but they get exhausted from you just telling them what you want and stay there. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not touching you. I'm not giving you no treats. I'm not giving you no praise. I'm not giving you no nothing. I'm, the word that I like using right there is I'm demanding something right now because you're, you're acting like a, a spoiled brat right now. And I'm not going to feed into that spoiled bratness. I'm going to have to do something about it to make sure that we're not, we're not in a relationship like that anymore. We got to change this up. So something to just do is just put that leash, put a leash, put a slip leash on the dog. Uh, Johnny, get down. Okay, you can get up. Put a, you can get up. Put a simple slip leash on the dog and, and just, just hang out with them. Hang out. I'm telling you, do not interact. If they're jumping on you, you're, you're pulling them away. They're trying to do anything with you, you're, you're pulling them away and you're just hanging out. At first, it's going to be work. It's going, you're going to be moving. You're going to be doing. You're going to be doing. You're going to be doing. But the dog shouldn't be choking because it shouldn't be in this extremely high uh, sense of energy, this crazy rage. That's why I say get rid of all the everything. And if that means that you got to gut a room out and just have nothing in it so the dog ain't got nothing to look at but four solitary walls, then that's what you do at first. And just do absolutely nothingness. And the more that you do that, the calmer and calmer and calmer the dog's going to get. It, it, it's not a matter of what's the right the, the method of the, the tricks and what's the right this and what's the right obedience thing to do. The obedience work is more than likely destroying your relationship with your dog. It more than likely is. It's putting your dog in a sense of just it has to do something that it just has no desire to want to do. And you're forcing it to do it. Some dogs are okay with it. But I still have yet to meet a dog that loves obedience work. And the only reason that the ones that look good doing it, that do it, is because that's why they're so short. These obedience routines are at max two minutes long. The dogs cannot perform that for no four, five straight hours. What we're trying to do with our dogs in our homes. Thinking that what we see on these shows with these guys doing all this stuff and all this competition looking stuff and thinking that the dogs can do that for eight hours. No, heck no, man. The dogs are doing that for two minutes. You, you, you're teaching the dog how to get there in, in a minute, two minute sessions you're doing. You're not doing no 45 minute sessions each time. You're doing a two minute quick session. Get in the heel, 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 get in the, heel, get in the center, get in the center. You're doing that for two minutes max and then you're, you're, you're done. And then you move on to do nothing else or something else. And that's something that is more than likely giving you a, a, a disrespectful dog inside of your house because the obedience is not going to get the dog nice in your home. Relationship is and, and just having home manners is Obedience isn't going to be able to, to, to replicate any of that because then you're having to keep on micromanage every little thing. Down, 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 stay, 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 move, 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 don't, 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 don't. And then a dog needs to rely upon you for all of that forever. And then you're, you're never going to be able to allow the dog to be able to figure out what it, what it needs to do on its own. What it needs to do on its own is have a good understanding of how to be able to calm down, how to be able to relax, and, and what, what's expected with that. And it's just something that's powerful that you'll watch. I, this, this, I, I watched, I think, my video yesterday. And I seen this dude, he, he got up at least 12 times. He was just up. He was all on Johnny. He was just going crazy. He, he was all on everything. He, I would say down and he would just look at me like, dude, I could do whatever the heck I want to do. And that's the disrespectful dog that you got in your house. I got the same issues. I have the same problems. So I'm going back to square one to make sure that I can have clear communication with my animal, what I'm looking for right now. You know, it's, it's, it's not that something that is just, you, you're, you're done. Cause I've been with a boy for five, like this is something new, but I've been doing these downstays with him for, for two years now. I've been out here making videos for more than two years now. And I've been working on that every single day. And he still has it in him. I was like, I just, cause the way that I've seen it recently is he disrespectful, man. He, like, he sat down, but he's like, I don't care. I can do it. I'll go over to, mainly when he started to go over to Johnny, start messing with him and his downstay. And I'm like, dude, what the heck are you doing? And, and that's what's going on with all of us. And, and, and we're all having these issues. That's why you're looking for someone to get some guidance. 
And I hope to be able to show you something right here of a simple thing that it does, it works, man. It works. It works, it works, it works. And it's an unfortunate thing that we're, we're, the situation that we're in is you're, you're going to put your dog through a little bit of stress. You're going to have your dog look at you like, I don't want to do that. But that's, we have to have that. As much as it doesn't make you feel good inside, you have to be able to do that so that you can get better. And that's the concept of, you know, especially just me, me reading my Bible and have a good understanding of God and, and understanding how it is to, to raise that child. It's, it's, I, when I discipline you, it hurts me more than it's going to hurt you. You know, when you say that to a kid, they're like, <laughs> the kid's looking at you like, no, you stupid, dude. Like, it hurt, clearly hurt me. You just spanked my butt. Like, that hurts. But in reality, it hurts the parent way more. It hurts the creator way more to have to discipline us to get us to be able to get into a right place. He doesn't want to have to do that. But sometimes, and unfortunately, most all times, that has to go down. There has to be that, that level of like, I don't want to use that word, but I'm going to straight up use it because it is what it is. We got to somehow have a little bit of that fear behind us to, to be able to act right and do right. We all as humans have fear behind us to live on this planet today. You can't just go freely do what you want to do. So much of what you want to do and you desire is actually illegal. So much of what you want to do and you desire, you, you have no access to. So we all have a thing of fear behind us to be able to function and be able to do right. And the dogs today, they don't have none anymore. They're free. They're doing whatever the heck they want. They're biting whoever they want. They're jumping all on whoever they want. They're jumping over and killing people's animals all that they want. They have no fear behind them at all. They're just free low go doing whatever they're doing. Knowing that, hey, if I bite that person, I'll probably get treats. <laughs> that's what's literally going on in their brain. But they need to know, because that's me. When I bring this leash out, this dog knows. He's like, hold on a second, hold on a second. And I want him to be able to think it through for himself. And that's what he's doing right now. He's processing, thinking through. Especially, I said, okay, get up, and he's still sitting. <laughs> he's still laying there. Every time I tell my Johnny man to get up, he gets up. But there's something powerful about being able to have the dog give me that respect that I'm looking for. And then the dog gets better. You can only watch him day after day. These videos I keep doing, watch him get into a better place and a better place. More calm, more relaxed, more chill, more respectful. As opposed to just being pushy, pushy, pushy. I'm doing what I have, I want, I can do whatever I want to do. And, it, it, and it's something about that that we all need to just figure out how to get our dogs out of you know, and the best way I'm going to tell you to get the dog out of it is get you a slip leash, put it on your dog, and just hang out and give it no attention, no affection. And if you got that dog that's going wild, double up those leashes. He's got one in his mouth, you grab the other. He gets that one in his mouth, you grab the other. He gets that one in his mouth, you grab the other. You're not yanking them. You're not pulling them off the ground. You're not doing none of that. You're just hanging out. You're, you're standing there with the dog. I got my hand here because that's my six, I'm six feet. So this is five and a half feet right here that, that's making sure that the leash, it, it, he, he's not chewing on it. So when he's chewing on it, I drop it, I grab the other one. He's chewing on it, I drop it, I grab the other one. He's chewing it, we're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he got both in his mouth and you need to triple up on it. He's got two in his mouth, you got it, triple, drop, and he's going to stop. Because we're playing mind games here in the dog that he, he, they think they smart. But they're like, man, you smart as all hell can be. Like, you smart, like how did you do that? And then they quit. They might be jumping and flipping and going and doing all that. That's what I'm going to say is an exceptional amount of them saying to you, I can't use that word. Heck no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not listening to you. Who the heck do you think you are to tell me what to do right now? I'm in control in here. That's why they're doing all of this. And we got to get them out of that. They don't stay in that for no five hours. I've yet to see a dog that this lasts for five hours. The most I've seen a dog do this for is it's minutes because they can't, they can't deal with it. They get tired. That's why I can stand here in one place with the dog on leash and get them exhausted in an hour and a half of me just calming the dog and so that we could just chat it up a little bit. Because your dog is barking and going to do it and do it. I got to calm that down because we got to talk. We got to be able to talk. And I can get your dog to the point that you've never seen it before exhausted by standing still. And that's what we need to do for our dogs is to get them tired. And the first time you finally just get them super tired, that's where, for one, I don't know why, but the respect really comes along. When a very, very tired dog is a dog that looks at you and it's, it's, it becomes so kind. It's like, wow, thank you, you're, you're, you're awesome. I really, I really appreciate you. And, and this is how we're able to do that to the dogs, by giving them that guidance without no verbal, no nothing, no trickery, no bribing, no, no, no nothing, but just saying, this is what I need from you. This is what I need. This is, this is something that you're doing when your dog is, is, is being, being, being ruthless with you, biting you, chewing you, Chewing on your hair, jumping all you, uh, uh, biting your clothes, going crazy. If your dog isn't doing any of this, I still don't know why you're watching my videos if you just got great dogs outside of being a dog trainer trying to figure out how to learn new stuff. But if you're just a, a pet owner 
and your dog is already good, I just still, I'm still figuring this, this, this dilemma out. Why do, why do we watch videos that we already know how to do and we're not trying to get in the profession of doing, but we just want to like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't get that. That's, that's to me where, I guess that word is considered trolls. That's, that's what that's all about. But uh, if you, you want to learn, then, then you're learning to do so you can help someone else out. But if you're just doing it to just like, my dogs are already good to go, they're already awesome, I can say no and they stop and this and that and they always come back to me and everything's all good, you know, this stuff, don't worry about it. You don't need it. This isn't for you. This is not for you. This is, in reality may ruin your relationship with your dog because your dog, you've already given it freedom. You've already given it the availability to do what it does and it's already able to regulate itself. And you, you may restrict your dog now to the point that now it feels like, I don't know about you no more, man. You used to be good. We used to be good. If your dog is good to go, I can straight up say it like that. Don't listen to me. If your dog is good to go, I'm not gonna give you the advice to help you. But if your dog is running a fool, if your dog is wild, if your dog is savage, your dog is crazy, your dog is biting, your dog is just barking, it doesn't know how to stop barking, I definitely know how to get you out of all those things. And I'm seeing all these universal things to be able to help it. And this number one thing right here that I'm gonna say is just have that dog on leash with you and give it no attention. It just, it just works. And I don't know why. I don't know why. And no one's probably ever gonna know why. But sometimes some things just work and they just work. I can't give you a study or give you this to say this is why. It just works. And, and I just keep watching it work over and over and over again. And when it just works, I'm just going to keep on using it over again. And, and, and it, it's something that is just, it's powerful. And, and, and it's so simple, so easy, and so laid back. And it works. Man, why wouldn't you just give it a try? Thank you. See, he's stuck. He know that power, I'm telling you. This stuff, this stuff. <laughs> put a leash on a dog and just hang out with him. Just, just hang out with the dog. Put the leash on and just, just just chill. I'm telling you, it works. And I don't know why, but it just works and it works.